Hello, my name is Brian Casey, Editor-in-Chief with AntMini.com, and we're here at the 2018 edition of the RSNA meeting in Chicago. We have with us today Dr. Emmanuel Canal. He is an MR safety expert with the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center and is uh, an expert on issues uh, such as uh, gadolinium retention. Uh, Dr. Canal, thanks for being with us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. So uh, we talked last year about um, gadolinium, the gadolinium issue. Um, what have been some of the major major developments in gadolinium retention, and maybe we can start by what exactly is gadolinium retention? What are we looking at here? Well, the issue has been a hot topic for the past couple of years, but the idea that some of the gadolinium we're administering intravenously on to our patients is with, remaining. With, with MRI scans? With MRI specifically, is remaining in the bodies of these patients, and for some reason specifically the brain is the main concern of most people. It's a very, very small amount, and um, that has been of concern to people. In fact, in, in February of 2018 of this year, there was a meeting that was organized by the RSNA and the ACR and the NIH, and it was specifically focusing on gathering the world's experts on this topic and updating what we know and, and don't know and where we should be going in research from here. And and that paper of those proceedings was just uh, published, I believe it's this month in November of 2018. And what were some of the main conclusions of that paper? I think perhaps the most important one to focus on is that there's a lot that we don't know and we're not really sure of um, whether or not having residual gadolinium in whatever form or forms it may be found in the brain in these patients are there any significant clinical consequences or not? We, that's the single most important piece of information that right now we still don't have an answer to. And it it's sort of boggles my mind that we still don't really know about this. I mean, what are some of the ways, is, are, is there anything we can do to try to figure out what's going on? Certainly, there's some, the whole point of that meeting in, in February was to try to determine roadmaps. Where do we suggest? The experts in the world got together and said, these are the things we need to know, and, and what do we suggest needs to be done? And those areas that they would like us to investigate include, for example, some of the toxicity studies that could be performed, and some of the patients that, that have complained that they believe that they have had adverse events as a result of gadolinium administration, perhaps studying that population further in greater detail. There are specific steps that were recommended in that paper that we might pursue to try to understand this matter better. Now, you mentioned that the FDA is, was involved in this meeting, and the FDA has taken a, 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 a rather more conservative approach to regulating gadolinium than, say, the European authorities. I mean, do you see the FDA changing its approach uh, based on, on this roadmap, or are we just going to have to wait to see the clinical findings? I, f I find that the FDA has, an, first of all, their approach is pretty much regulated, and there are different regulations in Europe than there are in the United States, and so their hands are tied differently. In the United States, the FDA seems to have the approach that until one can identify a harm, then removing drugs or restricting them has its own negative potential outcome, and therefore they won't do that unless someone can show that there is a specific reason not to do so. An abundance of caution sounds good, but it may not be an abundance of caution if you're withholding drugs that patients may also require. Now, what sort of advice would you have for an MR facility that might be seeing patients that are refusing to have gadolinium-enhanced MR scans? It's perfectly appropriate to be aware of the topic and to proceed with caution. And what that really means is that it's appropriate, in my opinion, to not administer contrast when it's not indicated. And when it is indicated, administering the appropriate agents with the lowest amount that you need to make the diagnosis that you're looking for. And part of our job, I believe, is to communicate with the patient what we know and what we don't know, and to also communicate with them in certain circumstances how extremely valuable the information that that gadolinium contrast agent may may be in order for us to accurately make the diagnosis we've been uh, asked to evaluate and to uh, assess. Okay, great advice. Now you are involved with a, a nonprofit group that does uh, deal with MR safety issues. Can you talk a little bit about that? Certainly, the American Board of MR Safety has been formed in, as a nonprofit in 2015, and it only exists for one reason, and that's to certify people for the positions of magnetic resonance medical director, magnetic resonance safety officer, and magnetic resonance safety expert. And these three positions were recommended by a consensus document that was published in November 2016 in uh, the Journal of Magnetic Resonance Imaging. And so these, the ABMRS has created examinations to certify for those three positions and it's purely voluntary and yet we've had several thousand people on their own accord 
physicists, radiologists, technologists uh, take the examination to date. And although it's an American board of MR safety, by literal popular demand, um, requests have come in and the examination has now been formally administered for the first time in Australia, in Sydney. In 2019, it's already scheduled to be administered in Auckland and in Melbourne and also in London. So this wave of tremendous interest in magnetic resonance safety has um, continued to advance and grow and has swept the world and is continuing to increase with the demand for not only increased knowledge but increased standardization mm -hmm. in safety practices throughout the world. Well, it's an important topic. If someone wants to get more information, what should they do? You could always go to www.abmrs.org. That's the board, uh, American Board of Magnetic Resonance Safety. That's their website, and it'll provide more information as to the process of getting certified and what the examinations are like and, and how to register for an exam. All right, very good. Well, Dr. Canal, thanks for being with us again. It's my pleasure. Thank you again for having invited me. All right. Signing off for AntMini.com, my name is Brian Casey.